headliners in the sport of gymnastics are often the mighty mites who demonstrate both power and poise. One such future star is 15-year-old Dominique Dawes. At four feet nine and a half inches, she follows in the footsteps of Olympic champion Mary Lou Retton and reigning world all-around champion. We expect to see great things from him in Barcelona later this year. Today, from Phoenix, Arizona, teams from the U.S. and Japan meet in the 1992 Dodge Challenge. Hello and welcome to the Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum, site of the Dodge Challenge, USA versus Japan in the sport of gymnastics. Hi everyone, I'm John Neighbor, and although these two teams have not met in dual meet competition in over a decade, perhaps you might be expecting them to compete simultaneously on all the apparatus. Well, our new format allows each team, six men and six women, to alternate turns on a single piece of equipment as they move around the floor. And Kathy Johnson, this new format should allow us to emphasize the differences between the teams. John, it allows for a very dramatic head-to-head -head competition since there will be direct comparison on each event. The U.S. team really is the better team here, but they have a lot more at stake than just beating the Japanese. They're all involved in the Olympic trials process, and these are the gymnasts that are vying for those final few coveted spots on the Olympic team. We have Michelle Campy, who won a silver medal at the World Championships last year in the team competition, and Wendy Bruce, who's coming back from two years of injuries and making a terrific comeback. And of course, we have two hot shots, Heidi Hornbeek and Dominique Dawes, and I believe we can really expect a lot from them here. And you know, we can certainly expect a much closer contest in the men's action. Bart Connor, when you talk about gymnastics, the tradition in the sport when the Japanese team has been dominant in two of the last three decades. What can we expect here? Well, the Japanese team has given us so many great champions over the past 30 years. People like Yukio Endo, Mitsuo Sukahara, and the 1984 Olympic all-around champion Koji Gushikin. Now, this team, although they don't dominate as they used to, they were the third-place team in the 84 Olympics as well as the 88 Olympics. This Japanese team is expected to challenge for a medal in Barcelona. Now, leading this team is Koichi Mizushima, who scored a perfect 10 in the Seoul Olympics he's one to watch for. For the American men, Jared Hanks is the leader of this team. He won the Winter Nationals and he won the recent American Cup gymnastics competition. And for the American men, this is an important contest because they're currently ranked fifth in the world. The Japanese team is ranked fourth in the world. So a victory here for the American men could be a very important psychological boost as they head into Barcelona. Well, Bart, after the first four of six rotations, the USA and Japanese men are tied. Tim Ryan is leading the all-around competition after four rotations. In the early rounds, uh, Jared Hanks got Team USA off to an early lead. And Jared showed a terrific combination of powerful tumbling, as you see here, and also some impressive strength work. This is an original sequence that Jared does from the shoulder roll up to a plange. And then watch this. He presses on up to the handstand. This routine earned him a 9.75 and gave the U.S. a .25 lead over the Japanese after the first rotation. Now in the next rotation, Takashi Chinen of Japan scored a 9.85 on the pommel horse, showing some incredible one pommel work and a very big finish through the handstand. That closed the gap between the two teams. But the U.S. was not to be outdone in this rotation following a 9.75 by teammate Trent Demas. Jared Hanks ended the rotation by scoring a 9.85, thus enabling the U.S. to double their lead over Japan. So after the Florex and the pommel horse, the United States was up by half a point, and then disaster struck in the third event, the Still Rings competition. Trent Demas had all sorts of problems on the Still Rings, was only able to score a 9.3, and unfortunately, that set the tone for the rest of the U.S. team as David St. Pierre got a 9.15, all-around leader Jared Hanks only a 9.2. Tim Ryan's 9.85 was the only bright spot for the U.S. in that rotation. The Japanese, however, had a great event on the rings. Toshiharu Sato, the last performer for the steady Japanese team, scored a 9.75, and in doing so, pulled his team ahead in the competition. Now, the fourth rotation was the vault. The Americans rallied well to tie it up. Now we enter the fifth round of competition. It's the parallel bars, and you're watching Trent Demas as he mounts the apparatus. He's currently eighth in the all-around. The U.S. needs a strong performance from Trent Demas here because Tim Ryan, the all-around leader, coming into this rotation, he had a disastrous performance on the parallel bars, got only a 9-1-5. So this is an important moment for the U.S. team. Trent has a very interesting routine. His long body line is very impressive on parallel bars. This is the best part of his routine coming up here. The final sequence, that move is called a Diamidoff. He does two in a row. Well done. The finish will be a pike double back somersault. Nice landing. 
strong routine for the U.S. And he knows it, too. Trent Demas had some disappointments earlier on, but he seems to be back on track, and the USA squad is giving the Japanese a challenge. This is the Diamidoff invented by the famous Russian gymnast many years ago. Two of them in a row, very clean form, good body line. The dismount is a double backflip. Notice his legs are straight. That's the piked position. Great landing. And so a 9.75 puts a little pressure on because that puts the United States into a strong lead with one performance remaining, and that's Toshiharu Sato. We saw him take Japan into the lead on the still rings. He now has to do it again on the P-bars. Sato is an interesting story. The fact that he's even here competing is amazing. A year and a half ago, he severely tore some muscles in his right arm in a car accident, returning from a ski trip. He has an exciting routine. Watch that move right there. Oh, a little shaky in the handstand. Nice combination. The Japanese are known for such a classic presentation of their gymnastics. Nice style, always good rhythm. He's just a little loose with his form, but a great landing. He needs a 9.75 to keep tied with the United States. He seems to be pleased with that performance. And this is the best part of the routine. This is the front one and three quarter somersault. There's a tremendous amount of force coming down right here as he catches the bars on his upper arms. He finishes with a straddle cut, swing handstand pirouette. Good combination. Just a little loose in that handstand. That'll be a slight deduction. Well, the judges' marks for Sato show a 9.75. Boy, this is going to be great. The two teams are tied as they go to the final round. The horizontal bar coming up when we return to the Dodge Challenge.